Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Freedom Train, the greatest podcast you have ever heard in your entire life. Don't deny it. You know it is. I am Joseph Ward, one half of the Freedom Train. Shout out to my partner, Patrick Irvin. As you know, um, I told you in the past when it comes to the interviews, Patrick is more of the behind the scenes type of person on that. He, he not as much of a people person as I am, but I drag him out every now and then. But He's still on the back end doing his thing. So when you comes to the, when it comes to the interviews, you're gonna more so see myself with the with the interviewer. So just get used to it because I like you and you like me anyway. And we've been <laughs> having fun riding like this for the longest anyway. So let's do what we do. So remember that the Freedom Train is brought to you by Pax Inc. That's P-A-C-T-S-I-N-C. Make sure you go to the website at www.p pactsinc.org so you can learn more about the organization and all of the resources that they have to help our community become a better community and you know pull the resources and us pull together and get our stuff together all right make sure you visit our freedom train website at www.freedomtrainradio.com that way you can learn more about myself patrick Enigma September, Queen Shelby and Queen Candice and all the great podcasting we got going on over here. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Freedom Train Network. Make sure you subscribe to the Enigma Sep Hour uh, YouTube channel. Subscribe to the Shelby's World YouTube channel and support everybody. We want all the podcast, podcast platforms. We out here. All right. Don't sleep on this because we out here. All right. So today, this is, I'm excited about this one, um, this interview. Um, this young lady, I've been bumping into her in the community. So for those who know, um, yeah, I do my podcast and I have my own, the shows of giants, my historical platform, but I've been in the community all the time. I do HIV AIDS and a lot of other stuff in the community. And if you in the community, well, I'm in the community, then you really in the community. Cause I'd be in, I'd be, I'd be in all the spots your grandma and your mama tell you not to go to. So <laughs> that's where I've met. And so you know, I've been bumping into this young lady, but one day I ended up setting up next to her at a community event. She was nice enough to scoot over, make room for us and everything. We was late because at that particular event, we always late. I don't know why, but we late. <laughs> but she was gracious enough to give us room to set up. So we started to talk. And as we talked, it was a good conversation and we learned more about each other. And she said, you know, I'm an author. I wrote a book. I'm like, OK. Okay, I, I'm an author myself. I like to read new books. I like to learn about new books, new authors, and support authors. Um, a Father's Love is the, the name of the book. Um, she told me to read the book before the interview, and I made sure I read the book. I enjoyed the book. And we're going to get into the book, how she put the book together, what it took to write this book, Um some of the information that's within the book and the aftermath of the book. Um, Kingdom Woman Ministries is a um, organization she's created where she's using Kingdom Woman Ministries to go out and help better her community. Don't let the title fool you because it's not just about women. It's about everybody within the community. So I'm talking about Miss Chastity M. Peoples. Welcome to the Freedom Train. Thank you. Yes, Thank yes, you for having yes, me. Yes. Oh, no problem. No problem. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm excited and I'm ready to get into this because your book, A Father's Love, I enjoyed reading it. As I told you and I tell the world, I read the book kind of like I was watching a mini series, you know, like you watch one of your Netflix series. So I like to, yeah. if it's good, I like the cliffhangers. So I read a little bit, then I am come back tomorrow. Cause I want to create little scenarios in my head and yeah, I was wrong right. most of the time, but still uh, it was fun <laughs> doing it. And if I can do that with a book, then that means that book is a fun read and a father's right. love. I highly recommend that book for everybody. But before we get into the book and before we get into all the information that, um, that is within the book, um, why you wrote the book, I know about you. I read the book. I highly recommend others read the book. But for those who haven't read the book yet and is seeing this for the first time, seeing you for the first time, give us a little background information about yourself. Who is Chastity M. Peoples? Okay. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Chastity. Uh, thank you, Joseph, for that introduction. <laughs> no um, I'm 38 years old. Um, 
I work um, in the community as well. Um, I'm a community engagement specialist. I've been doing that now about two years, give or take. Um, been in the healthcare field my whole life pretty much. Um, I have some mental health background. Um, I have worked with uh, people with uh, mental and physical disabilities. So I have that piece. So um, I pretty much, I would say in a nutshell that I'm the type of person, I'm just like a caregiver. Um, so I think growing up, since I had this love for self-care books, I meant self-help right. books, excuse me. I kind of knew that I would always like write a couple of books in my lifetime, um, particularly books that are going to be able to uh, help people. So right. um, whether I am posting on my personal Facebook page, um, of course, I've written this book, but I'm always trying to push people forward. You know, um, that's kind of how my life has kind of just evolved. You know, I'm just this person that loves to encourage others. Um, mm -hmm. I want you to be your best self. So um, this book kind of came from some experience that I uh, personally went through. And um, I really did not initially want to share any of this information with right. anyone. You know, I thought it would be just something that I would go through um, on my own. But um, just through um, my spirituality and prayer, you know, um, God really led me to um, use this book as a vehicle to not only heal myself, but others. Gotcha. So I was inspired to go ahead and um, get it published. And it is the product of what you see here today. Right, right. So, a father's love—just the title alone—it's um, a—it's a double entendre. Um, that's kind of how I took it. As and as I was reading the book, I was—it came more and more and more. Okay, and like I said, for my interpretation, like a, a a double entendre with a father's love. But why did you mm -hmm. title your your first book out the gate? You can name your. You can name your first book anything. You named your first book A Father's Love. And like I say, for me, it's a right. double entendre from my interpretation. But why did you name, why did you choose to name this book A Father's Love? Well, um, the inspiration behind the title of the book came from my biological father. Um, mm -hmm. His name is John Peoples. Um, I had a great dad. I am what you would call a daddy's girl, for sure. Mm -hmm. So um, it's so it's so crazy because the the way the book flows, um, the two kind of just intertwine. You know, my earthly father and my heavenly father, and the two kind of just mesh well together. And I called it a father's love because um, the the way I expressed in the book the interpretation of my earthly father kind of mm -hmm. parallel with um, my spiritual father, you know, right. and the way that I was cared for by both, you know, and my experiences with my earthly father, and my experiences with my um, heavenly father. It's almost like when my dad died, when I was 16, my heavenly father took over. Like he picked mm -hmm. up that role and kept going with it. And so I kind of, you know, did my best to show you how those roles paralleled in my life. And I called it a father's love because I had the, um, just the pleasure to experience the, 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 the greatest love on earth from a father, but also the greatest love from my heavenly father, which continues now. So that yeah. was, the, um, the inspiration behind this book. I just wanted, um, I just really wanted to shed light on um, just my dad and his role in my life and how he played such a pivotal role. You know, we only had 
I only was with him for like six, for 16 years, which is a short time. But in comparison, I feel like I learned a lifetime of things from my dad. And I feel like it was meant to happen that way. You know, um, I know people might that might seem a little morbid for some people, but I had a lot of time to heal and kind of process, you know, losing my father at such a young age. But um, what he was able to um, impart into me in those 16 years has lasted me a lifetime. So I'm right. just very grateful. So that was the inspiration behind the title. OK, 11 years old at 11 years old. That's when you first gave yourself to God, uh, mm -hmm. as I was reading in the book. Your faith is a very important part of your life. Um, right. At such a at, at, at a at 11 years old, we're still trying to figure ourselves out. But you had something within you that led you to give your life to Christ to, to become saved. Mm hmm. Like, what was going through your mind at 11 years old? Like, what really gave you the courage to take that step? Because most 11 year olds not really doing that. Like, right. and, and also, also, it's not, it's not the, it's not the altar call where your, your mother, your grandmother, somebody in your family pushed you up to it. It's something you, you had within you. So, right. what was that in you that motivated you to, to go after God like that? Um, I really think it was just me wanting to know him for myself. Um, I'll just tell you just a little bit about me as a kid. I was very inquisitive. Like mm -hmm. I had a huge imagination. Like I was one of those kids that like I could be in my living room, but I'm in New York City. Like I was just like, I had this just really just this beautiful, innocent imagination Right. But growing up in the church, I was conditioned to believe that, you know, God was just this, you know, judge and like mm -hmm. he was in heaven. And, you know, if you did something bad, you were going to yeah. be in trouble. But if you did something good, you were safe. But I don't know, in between just really taking a look at how other people around me view God. I wanted to have my own personal experience with him, you know, because I just okay. didn't within me. I just didn't feel like he's this type of like he's like this, like he can't right. be so harsh towards us. He can't be right. so judgmental towards us that, you know, we have to be so perfect to serve him. Right. You know, I just had to take that journey for myself. And I know it was you know, him drawing me to him because I really didn't understand the levity of what I was doing at 11 years old, as you can see, because, you know, as time progressed, I did, you know, kind of stray, but my heart was divinely connected to God. I would say that. Right. Right. Did you, what, did you stray or was you growing or was that a part of the path for you to grow? You know what? That's interesting because I would say that that was the path God chose for me to grow because I always say, um, and thank you for that correction, because I always say that um, no matter the experiences that we have, whether they are good or bad, they are truly God's experiences because mm -hmm. these are the things that he get, He gave us. He gave us life. So the experiences that we have, they are tailor-made right. for us to get to the point of destiny, to get to the point where we're walking in purpose and we are who we're supposed to be. So you're right. I would say that it wasn't a stray, but it was just me growing into the person right. I am today. That's beautifully put. I have right. totally agree. So and 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 I say I say that because um the the way you write the book it's a it's, you do a great job of going step by step with uh throughout your life and how each I guess relationship with different people that you may have and that's one of the the things that I did like about the book um specific people the way you illustrated the the relationships mm -hmm. um 
several romantic relationships and even relationships with your family, how they were um, beautifully illustrated. So um, like relationships with your siblings. I know you talked about your sister, your sister being your rock. Like you were the, you were the youngest of five, correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a you have a, a solid relationship with your sister, but what about your uh, your other siblings? What is your relationship like with uh, with your other siblings? Well, we are really close. Okay. You know, all of my um my siblings and I we are really close, and it's um kind of an interesting story because when we were growing up, we were not really close. We actually. Kind of bickered a lot, as you know, the dirty dozen of siblings yeah, yeah. growing up in the same household, a big family. You know, you're gonna have those issues. But um, one thing that my mom instilled in us was she will she will always have this phrase that she would say, like, "You only have each other in the world. Like, this is your family. You need to take care of one another. You need to stick together. You need to stick together. You know, even though we used to fight." You know, she would get the most angry when we fought each other, you know, because she was like, hey, you know, y'all got to stick together. So over the years, our relationships kind of worked themselves out, you know, and mm -hmm. I would say I think that's because we all we all had our own paths to lead. But at the same time, we were still able to hold true to those values that my mom instilled in us from you know, really early on. So yes, like all of the relationships are different, but what is so um, endearing to me is that we are all still so very close. That's good. Now, but I think that's a part of life though, because my brother and I, we, we grew closer as we got older. Um, <laughs> we wasn't, a, we, when we was younger, you, you don't really want us in the same room. Like <laughs> something going, <laughs> something going to happen. Like, but we were just, we was two just young people with totally different personalities, not understanding how to mesh. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I get it when you say it has, the relationships have to grow. We are growing as people. Right. So, so with that being said, the, your relationship with your mother, when we talk about growing, what have you learned from your relationship with your mother and how have you grown and not just in that relationship, not just in the relationship with your mother, but have, how have you grown overall from the lessons that you've learned from the relationship with your mother? Oh, that's a big one. Well, I think um, I am more uh, sensitive to um, how a person becomes who they are. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't just become who we are because of that's just how we are. You right. know, it's the experiences that shape us. It's the things that we go through. And that is something that um, I had to really take into consideration when it comes to our relationship. Um I said, I heard this phrase recently, um, the things that people do to you, there's no excuse for it. You know, there's not, um, you know, an excuse for it, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, you just learn to create boundaries that right. are safe for you, for you to continue to heal and to be who you are. So that is what I have had to do. I have had to um, forgive. Um, I'm still healing and I am still creating those boundaries that are um, safe for mm -hmm. me to continue to move forward because, um, you know, there are still um parts of the relationship that are not um, are stagnant or just not even moving forward at all. In which case I had to learn to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, I am that person that wants 
just everything to be okay. But certain things um, come with time and then certain things you just have to let go. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm with you, I'm with you. So you have you have the experiences that you have and I'm I'm giving a bit, but I'm being vague because I want people to read the book because you, you have to read the book. But given all the experiences that you've had, um, the various relationships that you've had, the ups and downs, the just it's being a person growing through life, not going, but growing through life, right? How do you go from someone who at one point, if you read the book, you felt like you want to give up on yourself? You felt mm-hmm. like, forget all this. I, I don't want to do this anymore. You go from that to being what you describe as a kingdom woman. So what I say is, um, it's kind of like, because I'm, I'm into mythology and a lot of things, but I just use like the phoenix or the scarab beetle, like beautiful ashes. You come from the ashes. Mm-hmm. Like you was at a point to where you, you really didn't know if you want to do this anymore. But now you're at a point to where you, you literally out here radiating. So, so for somebody who will see this interview, how were you able to grow yourself from one point to this point where you are to being this kingdom woman out here radiating and helping others? That's a good question. I think the first thing I would say is looking at your experiences for what they are. Because a lot of times when we go through certain things, particularly things that are painful, it tends to distort the image of, or I should say the actuality of what we're really experiencing. Mm-hmm. Because we don't want to suffer. We don't want to go through. We don't want to um, experience, right? We, nobody wants to experience pain. But I would say just being very intentional about the perspective of the experiences that you're having. Always checking your perspective because that's going to be um, pivotal with you getting from one step to the next. That's the first thing. The second thing is being intentional about your healing. You know, um, I had to be very honest when it came to my healing. Um, and also be tender with myself because there were times when I wanted to rush through it, when I really needed to just take some time, you know, and that can be, that can be daunting, especially in certain experience that you may face. I would say like, uh, death and dying or getting a divorce, you know, or losing a child, you know, those things can be devastating. Uh But it's how we, um, the the way that we navigate our healing, I believe, is what propels us forward. So choosing not to get up from a situation when you know you still need time, you know, because I think we want to be, especially women, you know, we want to be so strong and we want to be so tough. But when I reflect back on the things that I've been through, I really thank God that I was, I just gave myself time to heal. You know, I didn't try to rush it. You know, that's important. Don't try to to rush what you're going through, because I believe, as you said, you're growing. So you need those growing pains, if you will. You need those things. You know, I had to, even now, I have to continuously tell myself that your life is personal. It's a personal journey. And if you choose to look around and try to compare what you are having to experience with other people, well, their life is not like this, or, you know, they didn't do it like this. You're going to always be tripping up. You're going to always be moving backward instead of forward. 
So those things are important. You know, check your perspective often. Make sure you're taking your time to heal. And because those two things are the most important with moving forward, I would not be where I am today if I didn't continuously, and I still do it, check my perspective. Mm -hmm. What, how are you seeing your situation? How are you viewing the things that you're going through? Are you, you know what I'm saying? Those, those are the two major steps I would say that got me to the place where I am, where I can safely say that I'm doing the work, you know, I'm doing the work and I'm not, I'm not surviving. I'm thriving. Yes. And that's a big. Yeah. But I think one of the uh, important things about this is people understanding that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay for things to not happen Mm -hmm. when you planned it to happen. It's okay for uh, people to leave your life. That that's not the end of you. That's not what makes you. Are you going to get up and dust yourself off and keep going? Or are you going to continue to lay there? Because the, that that moment you you choose to lay there, that's when you lose. Right. But but it's the it's the getting back up and I see you're an advocate. You know, you out here. I only I don't know how much of an advocate that do you um or even an activist in both uh lanes that do you know because just for somebody who's been to the brink of okay i i want to do something different but i don't know how to get there but to but to still get there but to still get there but also um and i i'm i even looked it up i th- i know i'm gonna say it wrong it's pcos or pocs pcos pcos okay yeah. so because that was that was something that was traumatic that was something that you experienced in your life um within your your marriage you all are attempting to create a child and you found that you have pcos so Mm -hmm. for for those who don't know what pcos is could you explain to people what it is but also how just because you've experienced that doesn't mean that's the end of relationships that's the end that's not the end of you even creating a family Mm -hmm. so um PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. And it's um, basically what it is, is a hormonal imbalance when women tend to produce more um, testosterone than estrogen, which is um, testosterone is the male hormone and estrogen is the female hormone. But in this case, um, we tend to produce more of the male hormone, which um, for some women, it causes um, facial and body acne, um, hair loss, um, of course, a big one, infertility, um, obesity, um, high blood pressure. Uh, There are, um, you know, just a lot of um, really scary side effects. But, um, you know, uh, respectfully and thank God that, you know, I um, didn't get a lot of those um, those side effects, but I did get the infertility um, aspect of it and most certainly the weight gain and the high blood pressure was Mm -hmm. a really really big one. Um, It affected my life tremendously because. I've never had an issue with my weight ever in my life. I've always been just like a pretty active, healthy kid. Um, When I was in high school, I did cheerleading. Um, Even after high school, um, when I went to college, I worked out religiously. Like I just became like this health nut, you know, all of this stuff. So it was kind of, it was, really, 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 really hard for me because I just began to put on all of this weight and I didn't know what was, what was going on. I have never heard of PCOS and it was like really scary. Um, my husband and I, we were, uh, trying for a kid 
and then we get this dumped in our lap. Mm-hmm. So it our what our marriage was taking a lot of hits, you know, but the hits that we were taking, some of them was something that we could not um right. We couldn't stop, you know, right. and PCOS was one of them. And um through this experience though, I met a lot of women with PCOS. And they were able to share their story. And um, it just kind of empowered me to say, hey, you know, um, I can handle this. So I began to research it. And I began to learn everything that I possibly could. Because I'm the type of person, if something opposes me, I'm going to learn everything I need to know about my opponent. Because I'm going to beat you. You're not... You're not gonna win. I'm gonna yeah. win. Again. That's right. what I'm looking for right there. That's what I'm <laughs> that's why I asked this question. That's what I'm looking for right there. That lion coming out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm gonna win in the end. So um I look, I don't this is not in the book, but I um I really just took the initiative and did the self-healing. You know, um, of course, with the leadership of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, but um, I adopted an anti-inflammatory um, lifestyle as far as my diet goes. Um, I just changed the trajectory of this medical diagnosis that I was given, and I just changed it. And I was like, "Hey, it's not gonna defeat me. I lost fifty right. pounds. I got off all of my medications." And um, I joined the boot camp, (laughs) working out, and like I just crushed PCOS. So say that, say that one more time, and say it with your chest. I just crushed PCOS. There you go. (laughs) I crushed it. So for any woman that you know she's you know suffering with PCOS, I completely understand. It's very sensitive. You know, it's a very mm-hmm. sensitive topic. Um, it comes with a lot of shame. Um, I experienced that personally. It does come with a lot of shame because, you know, um, as women, that's something that we never want to be told that we can't do. And that's how right. true. You know, right. that's one thing that we're supposed to be able to do. So, um, yeah. But you, like I say, you you continue to fight. You continue to push forward. And you continue to inspire others because um, there somebody's going to read your book who's been through similar situations, and they're going to be able to see that there is a future. You don't have to focus so heavily on what you're actually going through, but focus on what you're becoming when you get through that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, so congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to just add this one little thing about the experiences. Um, Allow yourself to. Allow, give yourself some time to. um, To formulate what needs to happen that endurance factor because it's going to take some time, you know, mm-hmm. endurance doesn't happen overnight. You have to build up to that level. And oftentimes it comes with new levels of stress, new levels of loss, new levels of, of, of pain, you know, turmoil, suffering, because those are the things that push us forward right Right. it's not the happy times everybody wants happy times but let's be clear happy times does nothing but they're just happy times they're happy experiences but they don't really push us forward and challenge us the way that rough times do the way that pain does So I, that's something that I, you know, I'm still learning too, because, you know, depending on what the experience is, is, you could be like, I don't know if I can deal with this. But when you have reference, 
you know, you can look back and say, hey, I've been through this. I can do it. You know, I did it before. I can do it again. It might not be exactly what I went through before, but now I have some stamina. I have some staying power. I have what young people say. I have some receipts. So, you know, I can handle this. <laughs> there you go. Right. So. Just went in to announce the Chastity People's Tour coming to a city near you. So look yeah, forward yeah. for ticket details. <laughs> New York City, Madison Square Garden. So, Speak it into it. You know it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the experience in the process like actually writing the book? Like how does one write a book? What was your process? What did you go through? Okay. Um, my process personally was when I actually knew that I wanted to write the book because I was kind of dibbling and dabbling in it. Mm -hmm. and it. And my experience was really unique because I was writing the book while I was experiencing these things. So um, that um, that brings about a whole nother challenge, you know, because I was doing life and the face of writing this book. So um, it took a lot of focus, you know, um, but when I got really serious about it and say, hey, this is going to be a book, um, you know, some people may not be, you know, disciplined in this way, but I would literally, you know, go to work, do my eight to five, come home and just write. You know, I would sit at this desk and just write. Um, and it would be somewhere between seven or eight hours. So I would spend work after work, you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. just writing this book nonstop, nonstop. But it was so therapeutic that the time that I spent writing, it was really no, um, it was really no pressure at all. You know, it was just so therapeutic for me to get my thoughts down on paper. So you de definitely, if you want to write a book, there is a discipline aspect that has yes. to um, arouse in you <laughs> at some <laughs> point. You know, even if you're just taking a couple of hours a day. Now, um, I knew that there was a um, like a mandate, if you will, on this book. I knew this book had to happen you know, just within myself. So the hours that I spent writing on it were just a, just a, just a innate, like a personal endeavor for me. So I was going to go overboard anyway, but just maybe a, just setting aside a couple of hours a day just to write. And that also keeps the flow of your book too, because I wow. noted even now, if you're writing a book, if you spend Say if you're writing 10 days consistently and then you take two weeks off, it's hard to pick back. Yeah. Up. Yeah. It's hard to pick that flow back up. So just, you know, even if you're just knocking out 30 minutes to an hour every single day. Now, that's going to become tedious when you're trying to write a book. So you want to try and build up to at least a couple of hours, you know, just knocking out um, as much as you possibly can. But, yeah, you know, that was. You know, that was my experience. I was okay. experiencing the book while, you know, right. crazy. Exactly. <laughs> right. Right. So so you you got it written. What was the publishing process like? Wow. Um, I thought, you know, going in it because I knew so little about just writing, publishing. I thought it was going to be really, really, really um, tedious but it wasn't. Right. Um, so I would firstly say that you really, really, really need to have somebody with experience that's going to um, not only support you, but almost like mentor you in a way, because I really had that backing with um, my publishing choice. Um, she was extremely, extremely vital, not only to the publishing but just her advice, her support, her mentorship, making sure that we held dates. If we set a date, 
um, making sure that we help after that date. Okay. You're going to meet that date. <laughs> You're going to meet that date. Her. <laughs> if I give you the book back and I expect you to edit it by such and such date, I need you to have that. <laughs> yeah. So you need someone as intentional as you are. If you're really serious about publishing, you need someone that is going to hold you accountable. That is so important, especially in the publishing process, because it is um, it is a stamina kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. um, everybody wants to see their name on a cover, but the work behind it is more yeah. important than the finished product to me. You know, yes. I was. <laughs> you know, I. You know, it's it's it's. It's really beautiful to see my face and my name on a cover, but the work that I put behind it um, is something that I cannot describe. And nobody can take that from you. You know, when I look at this book, I know I put every single thing into it, you know. So and I know that I put the work in, the time, the editing, you know, the staying up late or whatever it was that's what's going to, I believe that's what's going to solidify your confidence as an author, the right. work. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. The, the, don't get blinded by the cover, by the book, by all those things. Because right. one thing I always tell authors is, what's your marketing like? What's your marketing plan? What's your marketing scheme? How many people know you, you're putting a book out before you put the book out? Mm -hmm. Um if you can put a team together, put a team together to help you get the word out. Um, those are some of the most important parts of putting out a book because you can feel how you want to feel. And mm -hmm. I, tr I, I try to be as real as possible with a lot of new authors. Um, get out of your feelings. Nobody owes you anything. Uh, yeah, friends and family. You're going to learn something new about a lot of people. You're going to learn, but don't focus on that. Focus on building your brand, building um, your, your platform, getting your product out, marketing it correctly, making sure that the book is put together correctly, is edited correctly. Um, your your title is catchy. Your, your book cover is catchy. All those things. If you can get all those things together, you can you can do pretty good. And like I said, get you a mentor. So uh we have to shout out Miss Barbara Joe Williams and the Tallahassee Authors Network because yeah, she's <laughs> phenomenal. Tallahassee Authors Network. If you're in Tallahassee yeah. and you're an author and you're not in the Tallahassee Authors Network, I don't know what you're doing with your life. I just don't because you <laughs> right. become a become a part of Tallahassee Authors Network if you're really serious about being an author. All right? right. Yeah. So, but I. I appreciate being a part of your journey as far as being able to read the book and also some of the conversations we're able to have behind the scenes about being an author and, and growing as authors because the content of the book and the just the the intentions behind your whole platform, I, I like. I like what you're doing. I support what you're doing. And, you know, like I would tell you, I'm a phone caller. You got any questions, whatever. If I can't answer, I know somebody who probably can't. So that, that's how we're doing it because uh, you put a you put a lot into what you're doing. And we all can see how you are affecting other people. And you can see how you're affecting other people. So keep doing what you're doing. You're going you're gonna to have bumps in the road. You're going to have ups and downs. This author thing, it's a... It's a learning experience. This entrepreneur thing is a learning experience. You know, most businesses don't make it past the three year point. So be as prepared as possible. Be as organized. Get you some get you a business plan, get you a marketing plan, build you a team. Even if you can't really build a team, don't kill yourself. Do the important things first. Mm -hmm. Get them done. But don't kill yourself. But if you can't build a team, but don't stop whatever whatever happens no matter how discouraged you may get because that happens right. do not stop because most people that i've seen who they put out books they put out projects 
and they got frustrated because they didn't get the response that they expected to get mm -hmm. and they slowed down or even completely stopped and there's no more momentum and they're still like man people don't support my stuff people don't support me. no people support you but you got to be your greatest supporter and you have to understand that people don't owe you anything mm -hmm. so so yeah and but, you what, got but you got so good though that what you're what you've put out is important yeah <laughs> you got to know what you put out is important you know even if it's just you. It's going to start with you. Like you say, it's always going to start with you. That support that it's always going to start within you. You know, I just had to keep telling myself that there is more that this book has to offer. Like more people need to read it. More people need to hear about it. And that's what's going to be lasting beyond the chatter, beyond the criticism, you know, some people might not like what you put out. Some people, you know, they're going to have their opinion. But are you going to be resilient? Are you going to be able to keep going forward? Are you right. going to be able to do the work? And like you said, you know, build your team or whatever you have that's going to support you and be in your corner no matter what. You know, because um, I heard this. Um, I was listening to... Um, this speech from Denzel Washington. And he said that um, if you're not making mistakes, you're not, he said, if you're not making mistakes, you're not winning. Like in order to win, you got to make mistakes. Yeah, You got to, it's, it's trial and error. You know, um, there is a tribe for you. There oh, is yeah. a pride for each and every one of us. There oh, yeah. are people who are destined to be connected to what you have to offer. And you just have to keep going and know eventually those people are going to come alongside you and support you and be loyal and be faithful to what you have. So until those people show up, you just have to keep grinding. And that's something that I had to keep doing. You know, when when I was alone, when I was in it by myself, when I was up at three o'clock in the morning, you know, all of those things matter. Those are the things that you can put in your bike pocket. Those are the things that are going to keep you humble. You know, even, you know, if you get you become successful, if you become this best-selling author, those are the things I pray I remember. The times when I was up late at night, the times when it was just me by myself, the times when people weren't really buying my book or people didn't know who I was. Those are the things that I pray that I reflect the most on that I hope that I hold dear to me because those mm -hmm. are the things that are going to keep you, those are the things going to keep you relevant. Right. The yeah. Humility. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So you've also, like I talked about earlier, Kingdom Woman Ministries. Mm -hmm. um, what is Kingdom Woman Ministries? So Kingdom Woman Ministries is a ministry that I created back in, well, I launched back in 2018. Um, at the time, I was going through a divorce. And... Um, the ministry was geared toward women. Um, it was like a Bible study, interactive um, type of ministry, very intimate. It was probably maybe about 10 ladies, mm -hmm. but we would meet. Um, we would go through the scriptures. We would have a topic. And the women were really blessed. You know, um, you'll be surprised of you'll be surprised at how you're able to feed people off of the things that you've been through. You know, so many people um, have some of the same experiences that you had yes. and you may not even know it. And, you know, in my, in, in arguably one of the hardest times of my life, you know, I was still able to give life to other women. Mm -hmm. And that's something that um, I will always be grateful for because that ministry saved my life quite literally because I was in a low place, but it gave me a sense of purpose. 
you know, that I was able to to bring to these women and they were encouraged and they were helped. You know, and I see these women to this day and they still say, hey, when are you going to start back doing kingdom woman ministry? You know, so it it was that impactful. So, um, yeah, but that's what the ministry began as. But slowly it began to evolve because I noticed that a lot of guys were um we're kind of joining the ministry and kind of saying like, Hey, you know, what is kingdom woman? Uh And, um, I was just in this place spiritually where I was really praying for the men. And, um, what I know now is that God was equipping me to, um, almost like relaunch the ministry and the focus of the ministry became men, women, children, and family. So um, after a couple of years, I relaunched it as God with us ministries. Okay. And so now the ministry is tailored toward everyone. You know, I even have little young kids um, following the ministry teenagers, which um, That's good. I think is beautiful, you know. So um, it's grown tremendously, and I just thank God for it. It's one of the things that keeps me extremely humble. <laughs> yes. Yes. But that the active servant, that um that person who understands the power of giving back. Because like you said, you were giving back at a time where I, I'm sure you felt like somebody need to give to me, but you were giving back. But that that marks like the true intentions of a person to me, somebody who's really, really helping people because they can see that people need the help rather than helping people for the glorification of others. Mm -hmm. And so, um, no, just hats off to you for, for being able to see past yourself at such a time and still be able to give to others because that speaks volumes. So, um, you definitely going to, uh, you're going to get your rewards, for yeah. all the things that you've the, all the work that you've put in but just all the seeds that you've sown you're definitely going to get that so you might as well get your harvest baskets ready and all those things because yeah. um <laughs> you know that's what that's what we do around here we 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 be successful um we make sure we support but we speak life and we speak success into people because mm-hmm. um you've worked you've worked for you've you've you set the foundation for it. you've planted the seeds. So it's just time to sit back. And when this, when the harvest comes, it's going to come. So you got to be ready. Like I say, that chance of the people's tour coming soon. So get ready. Here we go. <laughs> right. So, oh, um, you have chastity, you have current chastity, you have young chastity and you have future chastity. So mm-hmm. I want to ask this. So, what advice would you give to young chastity, but also what advice would you give to future chastity? Mm, that's a good question. Um, hmm. The advice that I would give to young chastity would be have patience. Um, trust yourself Mm -hmm. and you are stronger than you know right okay those are the things that I would tell the young chastity Um, the future chastity hmm The future chastity is going to be major. Um, But I would encourage her to enjoy every moment Mm -hmm. and remind yourself that you deserve it. Okay. Yeah. Not because you have necessarily 
done anything special than anyone else, but you have definitely put in the work. Right. Yeah. Get what you deserve. You get what you work for in this life. And um, I think that's one of the uh, beautiful things that we, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel beautiful when you're going through it, but when you get a chance to look back, you can see that life is a just a, an accumulation of the decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. And within that, it's, are you going to continue to grow? Are you going to make the choice to grow? Are you going to, or are you going to make the choice to stay stagnant and just allow life to consume you? I know the, um, I was reading some Buddhist texts and they was talking about suffering and how a lot of times people's desires or some of these things that people go through can lead to suffering depending on their perspectives about them. So also encouraging people to be mindful of your perspective of life. Because your perspective of life could lead to a lot of the suffering or the ill will that you may feel towards yourself or others. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, life may be tough, but what's your perspective about what you're going through? Because, right. you know, so we both could be walking through a thorn bush where you like, oh, man, this this hurt. And I'm looking at, man, I can use these thorns to make something out of it. So it's just okay. perspectives. Mm -hmm. so, That's it. But. And and the reason why I asked that because that shows your perspective. Like you, you can see where you've grown. You can see that you definitely have a future for yourself. You have an outlook for yourself, and you're going to work to get there. And you are going to get there. And that's why we have this freedom train to make sure we help you get there. Yes. I so. Love <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. So. <laughs> how can how can people get in contact with you? So somebody see this interview say. I'm, I'm interested in that book and I want to know my mo know more about her. First of all, where can people buy your book? So um, you can purchase the book through Amazon. Um, it's on pa it's paperback and Kindle. So, um, you know, you can choose uh, whichever one you would like. Uh, okay. You can also follow me on Facebook. Um, I am me on Facebook, Chastity and Peoples. <laughs> um, you can also follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is burning one. So um, it's burning underscore one. So you can follow me on Instagram as well. All right. And all of her uh, social media handle, uh, book links and everything is, is in the description. And this is a picture of the cover of the book. So when you go to Amazon, Make sure you look for this and get that and get your copy. Get and like copy. I say, all the links to connect with her to buy the book, everything is in the description. So y'all make sure you all link up, reach out to her, talk to her. She's so nice. She's so nice. And <laughs> and this is going to be an excellent journey. Um, being able to witness you in the future and continue to do what you do, representing the great Gaston County. Yes. So a lot of people don't know, but a lot of people be sleeping on Gaston County. A lot of great right. people come out of Gaston County. So they be, they be tripping. Yeah, it's small, but a lot of great people come out of Gaston County. Right. So a lot of jewels. You know it. You know <laughs> it. So um, I, I appreciate you taking the time out of your, out of your day to, to come rock with me and be on the freedom train and definitely enjoy talking to you. And Hey, everybody remember subscribe, to the YouTube channel, like this video, share it, put your comments in that comment section. If you want to talk to both of us, talk to us, talk to us, and we definitely will respond to you. I am Joseph Ward. She is Chastity and Peoples. And uh, A Father's Love, once again, is the name of the book. Make sure you go support, 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 and we will see you guys next time. Peace out.